Hi, my name is John Fallon. I'm a 7th and 9th grade English teacher at Fairfield Country Day School in Fairfield, Connecticut. I um, have been trying to use games in my class in different ways for the last couple of years. And about two years ago, I started uh, creating an alternate reality game for my 7th grade students. And um, ever since then, I've become a big believer in, in expanding the use of games in classrooms, but also uh, something else that I'll talk about today is, is that teachers need to start seeing themselves as uh, artists and designers and not just uh, delivery systems for content. As far as games go, um, I had a few teachers uh, growing up, uh, one particularly memorable one in fifth grade and one in ninth grade, that used different role-playing games um, of their own design to help teach uh, different uh, lessons, one on um, Pioneers in the West and the other on Homer's Iliad. And those were really transformative moments for me as a student. It was kind of one of the first moments where I really felt that teachers were speaking to me uh, as a uh, unique individual student and really trying to make learning exciting instead of trying to trick us into liking it or you know, covering it with a veneer of fun and then it just being regular uh, traditional content underneath. So I'll, once I stepped into this classroom, I definitely wanted to try to recreate that experience. Um, after a few years uh, of it percolating in the back of my mind, I played a game called The Secret World, which is a um, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. And it used a lot of alternate reality style uh, puzzles. And once I saw these puzzles in a completely different game context, I realized that these types of puzzles could probably be put into my classroom. So I immediately set to work and I created uh, Dolus, who is the world's greatest thief that has stolen the Journal of Odysseus and the students are tasked in, in collecting it back one by one. And they have to solve a ver variety of puzzles uh, and uh, crack different challenges in order to do it. I um, attach this uh, to the Odyssey for a couple of reasons. One, um, I had that feeling of, you know, mythological structures work really well with students and you can you have a lot of flexibility, but also because Odysseus is a hero that is unique in the Greek pantheon because he is not like Achilles, who's essentially invincible. He's not like Hercules, who is essentially just strong. He's fairly mortal. He has no superpowers to speak of other than the fact that he is a tenacious problem solver. He is put into an impossible situation and through human ingenuity finds a way out. Um, and that really spoke to me as a teacher because one of the core competencies that, that uh, I really want to teach them is resilience and being able to problem solve through resilience um, on multiple different levels uh, with any type of, of challenge. Uh, because in today's world where so many answers are a click away, many students are beginning to develop this, this feeling that if it's not easily solvable with, with an, uh, a Google search, then it's not really worth going into. And, and that's still a universal problem solving skill is never stopping even when it gets hard and, and, and clawing your way through it. So I began to design this. And one of my first anxieties was I'm not a programmer. I have no programming skills, I, I can't Photoshop, I can do very basic video editing in iMovie, very basic you know, audio manipulation and programs like Audacity. I can put together a pretty good PowerPoint presentation, but that's about the, the limit of my uh, quote unquote you know, artistic and technological ability. Uh, but I found that with enough time and effort, you know, these types of games don't really require. There's not, there's not that big of a wall to make your own game if you have uh, the idea and you have the time and you, ma and you make the effort. Um, and by putting together various different, various different types of puzzles, um, I was able to create an experience uh, that the students found very compelling. And uh, it was pretty common for boys who were not particularly hard workers in the traditional sense, uh, at least within the context of my English class, would be going home and spending hours trying to uh, crack arcane puzzles and learning completely new systems from scratch in order to be able to do it. And once I saw that, I knew that this was something that was uh, crucial for uh, the learning setting. And it's really come to uh, be a real mantra for me is that games are a learning style. There are many students 
that learn extremely well in games. And these are often the students who are not being approached in a traditional uh, curriculum. And they need uh, a different way of having learning and challenges uh, given to them. And as classrooms begin to do this more, we will definitely find that we're going to be reaching students that we have not been uh, reaching, and that students uh, will be learning at greater levels and with more autonomy, and they're going to be taking away skills that are probably going to be crucial both today and uh, in the rest of the 21st century. And teachers today, uh, the one thing we need to realize is that we, we can design. We can make these games. We don't have to rely on, on people who are a little bit uh, more technologically savvy. With a pen and, you know, and a piece of paper, you can create uh, quite a bit. And all of us have the, have the design urge in us. And um, all of us can, can definitely create games that will compel our students and make them better learners. Thank you.